This is the GIS Evening Report for Monday, May 6th, 2024. I am Rakesha St. Louis. In the headlines, government launches land tenure regularization program. We'll have details to this story and more when we return. Are you thinking about buying a vehicle? Did you find a company on social media? Stop. It may be a scam. Look out for the following red flags. Is the price lower than other dealers? Does it seem too good to be true? Are you sending the monies to the US even though you are ordering the vehicle from Japan? Does the address on the invoice match the address on the payment details? Are conversations limited to WhatsApp text? Is there a sense of urgency placed on you by the seller? You are about to be scammed. Do not take your hard-earned cash, or even worse, a loan, to send to these scammers. Once the money leaves Grenada's shores, you are not likely to get it back. Consider buying a vehicle already on island from an individual or a car dealer. Beware of these scammers. If in doubt, it's best to stay out. A message from the Financial Intelligence Unit. Welcome back. Government, through the Ministry of Agriculture, Lands, Forestry and Marine Resources, has launched a two-year program to address land ownership across Grenada. The Land Tenure Regularization Program is part of a policy directive to provide ownership titles to families and individuals who have been occupying government or crown lands for over 10 years. Government owns approximately 10% of lands with the remaining 90% privately owned. The regularization program seeks to enhance land governance and minimize land disputes and provide legal recognition and documentation of land ownership to eligible residents. Gemma Bain Thomas, Administrative Executive in the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands, Forestry and Marine Resources, explained the process of regularization and who will benefit. She said those allotted crown lands will have 12 years to complete payments. Citizens legally occupying Crown lands are those who went through the approved application process for whom there is a cabinet conclusion approving the lot of Crown land in their name. Such approval may or may not have been conveyed to them in writing and they may or may not have commenced payment for the lots allocated. The program will be working from the records at the Lands and Service Department. The records are mostly manual and the opportunity will be taken to develop a computerized system as part of the land tenure regularization program. For citizens occupying Crown lands for a period of 10 years with no legal authorization, that is no cabinet conclusion or letter of approval, the land tenure regularization program will develop a pathway to legal ownership. This will include documenting the parcel of lands, establishing the size of the lot, developing terms and conditions for legal ownership, and working with them to the point where they can be the legal owner of the plot of land. Mrs. Bain Thomas said those who have completed payments to government for lands will be regularized first. We propose to deal with the occupiers of Crown land in different categories. So we have those who have completed payments, they will be addressed First, all, all occupiers of Crown lands who have over the years made all the payments and they, we have the records to prove they were given a cabinet, there's a cabinet conclusion and so, they will be the first set of people um, to be addressed. Then we'll move on to category number two, which is um, people who are on Crown lands, they have been legally approved to be there. Some have made payments, but they have not completed. Some have not made payments, although they were given letters of approval, 
with the details of the amount to be paid. This will be category two. Then we are going to move on to the informal occupants or the squatters who have no legal authority in the sense that there is no cabinet conclusion, there is no letter of approval. And so within the two years, we anticipate that we should be able to deal with these three categories of people. However, given the amount of people, and when we go on the ground, when our field officers go on the ground, we might be discovering additional challenges we are open to the project going on for a third year. Philip Alexander, Technical Specialist, Land Administration within the Ministry, says the parcels of lands available to date are connected to programs that were established on the previous governments, Land for the Landless, Idle Lands for Idle Hands, and Model Farms program. Currently, there are over 8,700 parcels of lands available. Alexander is hopeful that this regularization process will address the weaknesses in land administration and management. We hope that this program will benefit the people that are most needed in the circumstances because we have today a significant number of persons, large numbers, who have been occupying and utilizing crown lands and other lands and those persons have not been in a position to fully optimize the benefit of lands. And that is what this program is about. With an allocated budget, government is committed to turning dreams of land ownership into reality for Grenadians who have made Crown Lands their home for over a decade. Recruit course number 46 has successfully inducted 50 young men and women into the Royal Grenada Police Force. The passing out parade took place on Friday at the Camp Saline SSU camp in St. George. Some of the graduates were presented with special awards in different areas, including best at first aid, physical training, and drills. Commandant of the police training school, Tafawa Peer, said the school has successfully completed another course, which used the in-person, virtual, and on-the-job training modalities. To be the premier institution renowned for excellence, providing high-quality, diverse training to law enforcement officers as we aim to deliver a robust training program to build capacity and prepare officers to execute their duties and responsibilities with excellence. This represents the vision and mission that drive our operations at the police training school. Commandant Peer said the training school, which has a well-crafted module that will prepare the graduates for the task ahead. What we are witnessing today is the product of a well-crafted system to encourage critical thinking, unearth skills, strengthen, build character, and indeed treat with the whole person to create the genuine article worthy to serve, all geared to positively affect the minds of the students to create the enabling environment for renewed thinking and a desire for selfless service and to equip them with the necessary skills to effectively respond to the dynamic nature of crime and the evolution of transnational organized criminal activity. Commissioner of Police Don McKenzie addressed the graduates of Recruit Course Number 46, encouraging them to be ambassadors of the Royal Grenada Police Force. Congratulations, you have made it. For almost 18 months, and it's probably the hardest endeavor that you have been engaged in for your life thus far. By you present here today is testament that you have been successful in that endeavor. Today, as you're about to enter into the world of a full-fledged police officer, please be guided 
by the advice that whatever value you put in, you will get the return accordingly. Keynote Speaker, Labour Minister, Senator the Honourable Claudette Joseph said that this graduation must be remembered as historic as Grenada celebrates its 50th anniversary of independence. She urged them to not only see themselves as police officers, but as someone who wears many hats in society. I am sure that for decades you will recall and relate to those who come after you how you were among the graduating class of police officers in the year of our nation's golden jubilee. As you step into this noble profession, it is essential that you always remember the awesome responsibility that comes with wearing your distinguished uniforms and stripes. To the public, you are not just police officers. You are defenders of the weak. You are protectors of the vulnerable, guardians of justice, keepers of our safety and security, inspirations to the young, and beacons of hope for those in need. This is the GIS Evening Report. We'll have more news after the break. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. Make us all VIPs. Take your vaccine. Get immunized and protected. Kids, let's build our immunity to have a healthier society. I'm vaccinated. VIP champions. A message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Religious Affairs. Be a VIP childhood vaccination and immunization campaign in collaboration with UNICEF and the Pan American Health Organization. Welcome back. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Culture, Senator Quince Britton, has reaffirmed the government's commitment to invest more into Carnival to ensure economic benefits. He was at the time addressing the official launch of Grenada's biggest cultural festival at the Kirani James Stadium car park. The launch, which was held under the theme, An Explosion of Culture, saw a display of the various elements of mass that contribute to the uniqueness of the festival. We commit to not just marketing our carnival as the safest in the world, but to offer, but in offering a unique, dynamic, and rich cultural experience that is inclusive for everyone. With this year's theme, an explosion of culture, you can expect the showcasing of cultural uniqueness of our spice mass as never seen before. Senator Britton, who officially opened the festival, said, we all have a very valuable and important role to play if Spice Mass 2024 is to be a resounding success. We recognize that it's impossible for us to do so by ourselves. Hence, we encourage supporting and partnering initiatives that would enhance the carnival product. We saw recently the just the concluded pan expressions. We, so, we endorse that initiative, as well as the Lunis Spark and Electrify Kids Soka Monarch. And in most recent times, we've heard of the Youth in Groovy, another welcome initiative. With such private ingenuities, we expect to contribute to the growth and, and development of our national product and to allow us for the continued sustenance. We endeavor to have greater collabor collaboration with different stakeholders to give you, the patrons and participants, both local and visiting, an experience that will leave you wanting more. Chair of the Spice Mask Cooperation, Kurt Ross, said the theme is not simply a catchphrase, but a call to action by all stakeholders. We invite every Grenadian, every artist, every musician, 
every dancer to be part of this explosion. Let your talent be the firework that lights up the night. I urge each and every one of you to be the champion of this cultural explosion. Share our stories, showcase our talent, and ignite the world anticipation of Spice Mass 2024. Let, be great, let Grenada be the epicenter of a cultural explosion. Mark your calendar, get your flags ready, and prepare to be dazzled. Spice Mass 2024. The seven queen contestants also graced the stage along with Calypso and Soka Artiste. The reign of 2023 National Carnival Queen, Miss St. David Amoni Francis, comes to an end on Majestic Thursday, August 8th. She describes it as rewarding, having had the opportunity to be involved in a number of initiatives, one of which is mental health advocacy, for which she has a passion. Ms. Francis spoke with the GIS after introducing the seven Queen contestants to the general public during the launch of Spice Mass on Saturday. I'm part of our ICP sessions, kick to mental health, as well as some involvement in culture as well. So I've been having a blast, I'm enjoying it, and just taking it in as it goes. It's, it's given me a profound love for pageantry, which I didn't think I would have, at least not so deeply. I've been able to interact with so many beautiful persons inside and out who have taught me a lot about my country, have taught me a lot internationally. I've had a chance to travel. I just represented Grenada in the Miss OCS pageants, and I will be representing in the Miss Chase pageant in July. And so it's really put me out there, and I am so grateful to have that opportunity. The reigning queen also had some words of encouragement for the seven beauties who were chosen to represent their various parishes on August 8th. I just want to encourage them to be pretty overwhelming sometimes. It's not an easy thing to put yourself to the, to the criticism of the public. It is very, very, very challenging. And so I just want to encourage them to keep the faith. They know what the ultimate goal is, and that's to win, to be victorious. And so they have that there are a lot of people who will come with that and be ready to face anything. Her final overseas engagement as National Carnival Queen will be her participation at the Miss JC's Queen Show, which celebrates the beauty, talent, and diversity in our region on July 31st in Antigua. That story just ended the GIS Evening Report for Monday, May 6th, recapping the top story. Government launches land tenure regularization program. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I'm Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us.